Hey everyone, Jeff with Motion Pro here. Today we are going to do a chain replacement on this Kawasaki Ninja sport bike. And to do so, we will be using our flagship uh, chain tool, the PBR chain tool that can handle the press, brake, and rivet operations uh, for this job. And so first things first, we're gonna remove the uh, chain guard from this bike and then uh, unbox the tool and get it ready to break the chain. So uh, the PBR chain tool works on all 50 series chains, uh, regardless of type, O-ring chains, or standard, uh, or the Masterlink style, whether it be a rivet type or clip type. Um, now this particular bike has a 520 O-ring chain on it with a quad stake uh, rivet type link in place. And so it will utilize all functions of the PBR chain tool. Uh, some chains, you know, take a uh, non O-ring clip style link, for example, um, is a lot easier to use. You don't have to utilize all the functions of the PBR, um, but this bike in particular will really show off uh, all the functionality. Uh, so right here we have the uh, master link. This is the, the OEM factory master link here that is marked with a paint dot. And uh, we are gonna break in that location. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you break the chain uh, as they're all riveted links at this point, um, but we are gonna go ahead and get the tool set up and break the links on the uh, OEM master here. All right, so let's get started with breaking this chain. So first things first, we will pull the PBR chain tool out of its box here and start getting this set up. So it comes uh, assembled like so. You can go ahead and thread the handle into place. And then we will back uh, the extractor bolt out of the body bolt. And you'll see the pin retract as you do so and you'll want to continue pulling that back until it is inside the pin is inside the body bolt a few millimeters that way there's room for the protrusion of the head of the rivet um, then we want to confirm that we are lined up in the correct orientation with this removable and reconfigurable uh, anvil block so the um, b wants to be lined up in place where it says break, and there's a nice detent to retain that. And uh, that alignment indicates we're ready to go. Um, we'll also apply some grease to the threads of both bolts here. It's always good to lubricate the threads. I'll actually back this off a little bit further to do so thoroughly. So with the threads all well lubricated now, uh, I'm gonna make sure that the body bolt is backed off enough to fit over the chain and get it over the link, which I am trying to break. Now again, I am doing uh, the master link. It really doesn't matter where you break it if you are throwing away the chain, um, just for the purpose of this demo and reusing this uh, brand new OEM chain, we're gonna break the master link. Um, you wanna take good care um, to properly align the tool, both with that lower uh, anvil block and the body bolt, and so it sits uh, completely over the head of the rivet. Um, if that's not lined up properly, you're gonna be exerting force without being able to actually uh, push the pin through. And you're only gonna damage components and possibly the tool if you do that. So that's snugged up there against the link. Um, I'm gonna put a 17 millimeter wrench just to confirm that it's um, nicely seated, but you don't need to tighten that body bolt down. Um, the, all the work is done through the extractor bolt here as it pushes the pin. So I'll take a 14 millimeter wrench here and grasping the handle, I am going to drive this pin through. So as I initially advance this extractor bolt, there's gonna be a fair amount of uh, force required to turn the screw as you push the 
rivet head through the side plate and then it will get easier. Now I didn't grind the head of the link off. This is a very heavy duty chain tool and it is not a requirement for this particular tool. Um, now, if you are working with a lighter duty chain breaker, um, it's quite advisable to uh, grind the head of the uh, rivet off to reduce the force required to break the chain. But you'll see now I'm spinning it pretty freely as the pin is pushing through and it will become very obvious when the chain is broken. There it is. It's really lightened up. So I can now back the extractor bolt out of the body bolt. I want to go all the way so the breaker pin is retracted and then we can back off the body bolt. And our chain is broken. So moving on now, we're gonna put a replacement master link onto this chain. Typically, you're gonna be doing this in conjunction with the new chain. Again, we're working with the new vehicle. So for this demonstration, we're just putting this new link back into place. Uh, now this is a hollow tip style that um, gets its own uh, specific type of flare as opposed to that quad stake style that we remove from the vehicle. So uh, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and install this new link onto the chain. So we're gonna get this new O-ring style chain all set up and installed, uh, connecting the two ends of the chain together. Uh, now this one has been uh, pre-lubricated uh, from the factory. Oftentimes there's just a little grease pack in place, so you wanna make sure to thoroughly lubricate the O-rings and pins. Slide two of the four O-rings uh, over this first half, and you're gonna install that onto the chain from the backside. So we're gonna go ahead and press that through completely. Now we'll take the two remaining O-rings and slip those over. And last, the side plate can get set into place. So now that's mocked up. And we're so we're gonna get our PBR chain tool set up with the reconfigurable anvil block. Uh, this time it's gonna go up into the body bolt with the P or press mark uh, lined up against the body of the tool. Uh, the back side of the chain will straddle inside the body of the tool and you'll want to center things up and press using a 17 millimeter wrench on the body bolt to advance this anvil block uh, until you compress the chain. Uh, now you want to be very careful not to compress this too far. Uh, it should be about the same width as the other links. Uh, if you go too far, you're gonna over compress the O-rings and create a stiff link in the chain. Okay, so now I'm advancing the body bolt to get the uh, width pretty close to where the link currently stands. And then Make sure that's centered up and continue advancing the body bolt until it is over the link. And you may need to make a couple adjustments as you visually indicate that it is centered up. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna grasp the handle and take my 17 millimeter wrench to begin pressing this into place. Now be mindful as you go. Continue to watch the alignment and the amount of compression 
um, so that you don't jam up the, uh, the chain if things become misaligned. Um, and again, you don't want to over compress the, uh, the master link. All right, so we're getting really close here. Uh, we can visually see that the plates uh, of the main portion of the chain are lining up with the master link pretty closely as we look down the chain. We can also sneak some calipers in place and uh, compare measurements. Just gonna give it just a touch more to be picky about it. That's spot on and I can kind of rotate the tool and feel that the, uh, the plates still float freely, the whole link floats. So that's a good sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and back this body bolt off now. And remove the tool from the chain. And there we have it, the plate is pressed into place. Now all that's left to do is to flare the ends to secure it. So now we'll get the PBR chain tool configured for the rivet operation. The first thing we want to do is get this anvil block configured like so. And you'll see that the laser engraved R aligns with rivet on the body. So that is correct and then we will take our hollow nose style anvil, which has a magnet on it, and stick it to the end of the body bolt, which is nearly fully retracted to fit over the chain. So I got the tool all set up and I backed the body bolt off, and so there's plenty of clearance for this to slip over the master link. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do now is rotate the wheel backwards, and so the master link is located over the rear sprocket. Now that's not totally necessary, but you might find this to be a helpful step as the support of the uh, rear sprocket will avoid uh, twisting the chain as you're applying load to flare that rivet out. So um, yeah, it's just kind of an extra uh, support while you perform this process. Okay, so now we have that master link positioned over the rear sprocket. One last thing before I set up my PBR chain tool is I'm gonna take an initial reference measurement of the chain pin. Now I'm getting just over five millimeters, about 5.05 millimeters. Um, and the reason I'm taking that is because I need to know the uh, amount that I'm displacing as I rivet the, the chain link here. Um, now, this is a really subtle procedure. Uh, typically, you're only going to be riveting about a quarter to half of a millimeter, but um, it's best to check with your chain manufacturer uh, for their exact specification. Um, you just wanna be mindful not to over flare it where uh, you can potentially crack or otherwise damage the link and you have to start the process all over again with a new link. So in this case, I'm gonna take it from about 5.05 millimeters up to about 5.3 millimeters. So I'll take my PBR chain tool all configured for the rivet job and carefully place it over the master link, making sure to center the tool over the first pin. And I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter wrench and begin, begin advancing the body bolt to flare the pin. And I wanna work slowly. Um, just go a little ways at a time and back the tool off to check your measurement. Um, and so I don't go over the uh, correct rivet diameter. Um, no need to advance the uh, extractor bolt here. Um, you don't want to touch that. It's all done with the body bolt. So here I'll begin. Go just a little ways. And then I'll back it off and check my dimension. Hardly got any movement out of that, so I need to continue working. Each time 
taking care to align the tool centered over the pin. And back it off again. We're at 5.2. Just a little more to go. Check again. We're about 5.4, so that's about 0.35 millimeters, uh, and that's a good looking rivet on this chain. So now I will set up again and proceed with the second pin. Okay, so now we're gonna start on the second pin. Just the same procedure as the first. Working slowly and carefully and checking our flare dimension often. Back that off and check our work initially. Just starting to move 5.1 millimeters or so. Center it back up and drive the body bolt. Check again, 5.2. So just a touch more. Back it off again. And that's looking good at 5.3 millimeters. So there's a second riveting process that can be easily completed with the PBR chain tool, and that's gonna be the quad stake rivet, which is a permanent and secure riveting option for solid nose master links on certain 50 series chains. These links are easily identifiable by their solid tip and lack of uh, groove for a clip. So this is a pretty popular um, method on OEMs, but becoming less and less common uh, on aftermarket replacement chains. Um, so uh, you're gonna be limited on applications in that sense, but typically it's gonna be found on uh, street applications uh, with higher displacement and horsepower ratings. Um, so we'll quickly discuss and cover the tool setup for the quad stake rivet, but not go through the whole process. Um, but you can reference the instructions for additional details to properly form the quad stake impression on the solid nose master link pin. Um, the end result is going to look much like the rest of the links on a uh, chain. So here we go with the setup. We have a 50 series chain here in front of us. Um, obviously it's on the bench, but you should be performing this operation on the motorcycle because once you uh, complete the riveting process, it's permanent and complete for the duration of the uh, complete lifespan of the chain. So um, this is simply a demonstration. We have our link here on the ready. So we'll set the tool up for the quad stake rivet. So you wanna make sure that the laser engraved R on the anvil block is aligned with the laser engraved rivet mark on the body of the tool as you can see here. So with that anvil block in position and the correct orientation, now we will need to put the uh, rivet tip for the quad stake operation onto the body bolt. It's held in place with a magnet, uh, but you wanna make sure first that the extractor bolt is backed off so that the uh, breaker pin is retracted into the body bolt. It's also a non-symmetrical design 
as you can see here, one edge is flat and the other end is chamfered. Uh, we want the chamfered end to sit against the body of the tool with the flat end facing out front here, like so. So with that in place, we'll set the chain up with the new link. Um, go ahead and put your O-rings on the one side in a normal application. All the O-rings and pins want to be well lubricated. Slide it onto either open end of the chain. Followed by your second set of O-rings. And last, the plate. Now that's ready for the press operation as we showed you earlier with the hollow nose style. It's the same for this uh, solid nose master link as it is for the hollow nose that we showed earlier. So no need to run through that again. So with the help of a little video editing, here we are with the master link plate pressed into position. Um, now we will set the tool over that link on the first pin. Um, you'll want to make sure to back off the body bolt enough to give enough clearance between the uh, anvil block and rivet tip to place the chain. Like so. And alignment is always important. So um, there's a counterboard there for the back side of the master link uh, over the pin. And then taking this out, you want that square profile there to sit squarely over the front side of the pin. So typically the chain is gonna be on the motorcycle and in a static position and you will position the PBR chain tool over that. And you can just get that hand tight um, to position it, then look from multiple angles to ensure that proper orientation. And with a 17 millimeter open end wrench, you can uh, begin advancing the screw of the body bolt until that nice quad stake impression is formed. Uh, you'll repeat the process for both pins. Um, make sure to reference any OEM specs for that impression and you will be good to go. So again, this is just a bench top demonstration. So not quite like the typical process of performing it on the motorcycle. Um, but please, if you need to perform this style of rivet on your motorcycle chain, please follow the supplied instructions that come with your PBR chain tool. Uh, there's additional information uh, included to properly perform this operation. So there we have it. We've covered the press, brake, and rivet operations of our flagship Motion Pro PBR chain tool. Uh, it's a really versatile tool, as you can see, and makes this a easy task. Uh, this bike's about ready to ride again. Uh, just a couple minor details to go. We will reinstall the chain guard. And if you're installing a new chain, it's really important to check the alignment as well as the chain slack. Uh, we also have some really helpful tools to achieve those jobs, so check those out. And if you want to pick up a PBR chain tool for yourself, check out motionpro.com or your favorite power sports retailer nationwide to pick one up for yourself. And continue checking back for more how-to and product-related videos.